Congratulations, first of all, on such an amazing and powerful film and for all the success you've already had. Um, just want to point out for you all, in case you weren't already aware, that uh, earlier this year at Sundance that Leo was awarded the at Best Actor Jury Prize. That's not exactly the right. <laughs> making too is the first trans person to be awarded that award so that's really quite amazing so congrats to the team I'm Rook I'm the writer and director and I've directed a few shorts but my main source of income and what I do for a living is key gripping hmm. <laughs> I'm Leo, um, I play Fenya, <laughs> and uh, I, I've been an actor my whole life. I was a child actor on Broadway for a little while, oh, really? and a salsa mm. dancer, and then my dad was stressed. I was going to become like a drug-addicted child star, <laughs> and so I stopped acting until I graduated, and I've worked on a lot of short films, too many to list, but uh, very grateful for this as my first feature. One of which just got nominated for Student Academy Oh, Award. yeah, that's yeah. true, which yeah. is so amazing. Yeah, this short that I did called Skin oh, by a nice trans eye. filmmaker, yeah. a trans masculine yeah. uh, director and cinematographer. Uh, you haven't seen it, I don't think. It got nominated it uh, and might be winning. Uh, I think it's going to win. Wow. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's giving Are there any voters in here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he's really talented. His name is also Leo. And he goes to AFI, and he's trans, and he's in the family. Oh, trans. Anyways, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. But he's trans, so I feel like that's dope. It's very cool. Congrats to you. And Leah, other Leah. I'm Alexander Stigmeyer. I'm one of the lead producers of this movie, and my background is really as a development exec, mostly. If you go back far enough, I that used to be a diplomat and I was a cartographer. Mm -hmm. so, <laughs> We're all learning different things about each things other. Things will never ever come up. Did <laughs> Yeah. Oh, I see. I see you. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Andrew Carlberg. I'm an executive producer on the film. Uh, started out in television on an ABC television show called Castle and mm. have been an independent producer for the last 11 or so years. And I produced a different short called Skin mm. that won the Oscar a couple years ago. <laughs> and, uh, that, I know, so we're ready for it. It's time for another Skin to win now. Uh, Silas Howard, I'm an executive producer on this beautiful, beautiful film, yeah. mm -hmm. and uh, I come from film by way of punk rock music, yeah. and uh, yeah, I made, yeah, exactly, <laughs> there you go, uh, yeah, made some films, and very excited to be part of this film, yeah, so not this one. <laughs> Thank you all. No Oscars yet. But no. also a very accomplished director. Yeah, incredible director. Who this year? Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Oscar on the way. You all have very interesting backgrounds, for sure. And I just want to point out, because we're at Film Independent, and that this film was also especially exciting for us to screen, because Mutt is a part of our fiscal sponsorship program. And also, Andrew and Silas are alums of our a few di of our different programs. Um, maybe you could just briefly mention that too, sure, what sure. programs you've been in. I, uh, yeah, I did the uh, Director's Lab um, with a project uh, about Billy Tipton, who's a jazz musician who was um, dis discovered to be trans after he died in 1989. And, um, and then Fast Track also with that same project and still in touch with a lot of my lab mates and mentors oh. from that. It was a really like, great community building uh, experience for me, yeah. And I was part of Fast Track in 2014, but my relationship with Film Independent goes back to 2008, where I volunteered at the Spirit Awards and was in charge of opening and closing the curtain for, for luminaries such as Brad and Angelina when they were. <laughs> <laughs> and was a stand-in for Brad Pitt. And I was a stand-in for Brad Pitt. They wanted someone that kind of looked right. And <laughs> <laughs> I, was a for the I like that. Um, well, wonderful. Thank you. It's great to have you back and great to have this project here for a number of reasons. Um, Book, maybe we could talk. I listened to your NPR interview mm. and you mentioned 
which you all should listen. It's a wonderful short interview. I learned it's actually it was a 30 minute interview, but it's an eight minute interview that you can find online. Um, you spoke at that point about the original inspiration for the story, which was about your sister. And um, I was I was curious to hear more about that. And um, if you could share a little bit about the in original inspiration and kind of how it grew from there into what it is. Yeah, um, for sure. I think when there's a smaller, so intimate gathering as such, I'm a little more open about my life. Mm. But I had a tough upbringing. I left my home earlier than <coughs> normal people do. I left Chile and I left behind a little sister. And at the time, I was more focused on mm -hmm. my survival and <laughs> staying alive. And when I was graduating in college, the senior year, I just kind of started really missing home and really missing her and wrote this kind of love letter to her and to the idea of mentorship and the idea of trans people as amazing mentors that I think sometimes we as queer people think that we can't mentor someone who isn't queer, but there's a lot of knowledge that we can give. So I just wanted to kind of think, okay, what would it be like if she just appeared? Would she care? Would she not? How would I treat her? Could I be helpful? So then that was the genesis and it grew to include a lot of things that I was really afraid of, like, am I ever going to be desired by a partner again? Am I going to be loved by the rest mm -hmm. of my family? What is society going to think? And just kind of investigating fear and really killing people with kindness, like my mm -hmm. characters, like really trying to be empathetic with the father character and the ex and everybody and just kind of getting in their, in their head and understanding a little bit more. Yeah, definitely. And we were talking a bit outside about how fast a process this has been. That you were saying yes that and no, yes and no. Well, yes, no. I guess it, once you started shooting. Yeah. I mean, yeah. but the, that their film shot less than a year ago, mm. actually, in yeah. August wow. last year, right? August twenty eighth was the twenty ninth. Twenty ninth. Yeah, yeah, it's been crazy. Yeah, and so from there, from your script, I was curious to hear, you know as you were editing rapidly. Um, and I imagine you've been through many drafts of your script, just what, where, where we're left with the story now, how did that kind of progress? Mm -hmm. um, anything you'd like to share about that, how the story changed over time? Well, I wrote it six years ago. It was quite different. The dad was a, a grandma. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, she That's was like so a Latin American grandma. Ah, abuelita. <laughs> abuelita. <That's> cute. <laughs> Very different story. Um, so, from the page, like the final script to this, it didn't change much. I think a lot changed. Kind of a lot, not that much when you got cast and you kind of brought all of your energy and we created together what Fena mm. was. So, mm -hmm. that was a big change. Um, but the page to this, it's pretty similar. Mm. I mean, six years of from writing it to now, there was just a lot of time to sharpen my knives, you could say. <laughs> so, um, and you you know this, but you guys don't know this. We shot, and we had two weeks to put together a rough cut to get into Sundown. So, like, it was a pretty quick mm. editing process, and I think the amount of time that it was marinating, and the fact that it was a 24-hour linear story, because you can't really change yeah. where things are. You can delete or, or keep things, but you can't really change it or reinvent it. So that was really helpful in the process of being able to do that. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. Well, you started to speak about it, but involving Leo in the process, um, can you speak a little bit about when you came on the project and also how you've been involved with shaping this story? Yeah. Um, I I received a lot of DMs on Instagram from friends of mine being like, I saw this casting call, <laughs> is this you? And I was like, <laughs> what? And then I read it, and it's true, Fenya on the page, as he was described, and I have a lot of similarities in our identity, and, you know, Vuk and I also, as humans do, um, you know, it was like, uh, Chilean and Serbian, I'm Puerto Rican and Greek. It's like kind of similar, it's close in, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like Latin and European. Um, and then it's like, you know, sharp but tender. And I'm sharp but tender. <laughs> and it was like shooting in Bushwick and Ridgewood, and I lived in Ridgewood for six years. That's my neighborhood. It just was this sort of, for me, it felt like when I saw this casting call, it was like a a message from the cosmos. Like, that's yeah. how powerful it felt just reading that. And so I emailed Vuk and I was like, you don't know me, but please just give me this part. I'll do, you know, whatever. And then he sent me the script. And of course, like, 
it was even better than I had imagined. Like mm. the script, the movie is really beautiful, but Vuk is a poet on the page. And for me, I love texts and I love reading and I love when writers really care about the language that they're using. And, and he just did such an amazing job at making you feel the heartbeat of the characters on the page. And so I just did my self tape and like, you know, pray. Literally was like, I really am just, I need mm. this. <laughs> because as a trans actor, you know, I had been working professionally for a long time, but this was the first feature length script that I had the opportunity to read where I could be a lead character and my primary motivation as a character had nothing to do with my gender identity. Mm -hmm. It was about me picking up my dad from the airport, me trying to have a relationship with my sister and my ex-boyfriend, mm -hmm. and yes, my transness comes up, mm -hmm. but ultimately it's a, a human story, and I'm not, to Fenya is not tokenized, and that was so exciting to me and inspiring to me to be able to be a part of a project like that and show what I can do as an actor, because I know, I mean, so many trans actors are typecast in this very particular way, uh -huh. um, or have been up until this point. I think that's really mm -hmm. changing. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then I got involved. We didn't have very much time to rehearse because it's a tiny film, <laughs> and you know, like people are doing everything. <laughs> um, so we had a few table reads with the other actors, and then we did go camping. For we did. Oh, we did <laughs> do that. Yeah, camping. we did that. Just us. <laughs> Just us two. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> we can tell you guys about that later. Um, Sorry, that's but, a long yeah, story. Yeah, yeah, it's a long story. So, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, it was great. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's so powerful. You, you just spoke to it, but I think just getting to be in your shoes and the way that it's written and the way that it's performed, I think, just really takes you on the ride of how it feels to be you and creates a lot of empathy for your character because you're just strapped into your... 24 hours. Um, so I think that's super powerful approach and that personal. That's what I like about what cinema can do and how it can be effective. Um, Alexander, um, I'd love to hear about how you got involved with this project and what drew you to want to be involved. Yeah, I, as I, I'm happy to talk about that. It's something that I Vuk didn't even know until recently, I think, when we were doing another Q&A or something. But um, I, uh, I, I started my career really at National Geographic magazine. So I had this like very journalism background and I produced art and stuff there. And then I was a development exec at Disney Animation Studio. And uh, after I left there, I left there to be an independent producer. And that was one of the first projects I read. And it was through another producer in the movie, Steven Scott Scarpula. And uh, just because I think of my background at Nat Geo and my childhood, I've always been really pass about, passionate about underrepresented voices. And I'd never read a script like much before. I was, had a different title at the time, but it was, I'd never read anything like it. Kiltro, it's like the Chilean word for that. Um, and I called Steven, who had sent it to me, who had met St uh, Vuk on set of another project. And, um, I was like, Steven, I have to make this movie. <laughs> like, I have to be a part of this movie. And I like bullied Steven <laughs> into, <laughs> into like getting us on, uh, to getting Vuk to come on, let us come on board the script. Um, and that was five years ago. And he wrote it six years ago, that's five years ago. And it was a really long yeah, process sorry. of, of, of making it. But I think I knew from the minute I read it that I'd never seen anything like it. And I think like Leo said, like Vuk's words are very poetic and, um, I just wanted to be a part of something that would um, change conversation um, and I didn't know that it would but I do think that it has and I'm really mm -hmm. excited to see what comes of, the, of this realm <coughs> in the future and how it can impact and influence what stories are told and how. Yeah. Definitely. I'm, I'm excited for it to come out. It comes out on Friday in Los Angeles. So be sure to tell your friends and family about it. Um, it's already in New York. It's already playing in New York. And it's also playing in France in the theatrical. So if you have any French fan, friends and family, I encourage them. Because all the, if you don't already know, the, the box office, of especially for films like this, 
really makes a difference. Mm -hmm. So maybe even just buy a ticket, even if you're not going to go. A great <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, it would be a really nice way to support this team and, and this indie film kind of making its way. And to have a theatrical is a really big deal. It's always a big deal, but I think especially a big deal yeah. in this moment. Um, but yeah, Andrew, can you talk a little bit about how you got involved in the yeah, role you've course. been playing? I, I mean, Alexander and I were fairly new friends. We met at a mutual friend's short film screening, which I am such a proponent. We were talking earlier of short filmmaking because I think it brings people together in such a quick and fast way, no matter how it comes together. But Alexander had told me about Mutt and it had been on my radar um, for several months. And then I remember at one point he was just like, we're shooting in a couple weeks and we don't have all the money. And I was like, girl, what? I was like, honey, that is really close. And I was like, so I helped just connect a few dots. Silas was already on board. I was a fan of his television career and Jake had already come out. And so I knew that I had like a stamp of approval from somebody that I also knew to be an amazing filmmaker. And um, I just, honestly, Alexander was the lead producer, but I just helped connect a couple of dots in the final. And he was like a confidant for me. <laughs> this is a really hard movie to make. Like Leo was saying, it's a, it was a small crew. Mm -hmm. We shot, uh, including um, pickup days or, or reshoots, we did 24 days, and we had over 30 locations. Which is insane. 37 oh locations, which is insane, <laughs> especially when you have money. money. And we didn't have money. And there was like one, like he was checking on me constantly. I'd never led produced a movie before. Yeah. So I was like leading him all these things like, is this the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? It's never the right thing, but you have to make it the right thing. It was like one day he called me and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, the PA just hit a car with a truck. <laughs> we were in a location we never scouted at. We just showed up today and started sitting here. It's the first camera assistant to the house. Uh, so he's marking up the wall. The roommate is not happy. I'm like sitting on the curb, just like venting to him. That, that, so that's very that's pretty not pretty. This thing is, I, I'm thrilled just to be a part of the journey, and um, I'm so happy with what everybody has created. I think it's so incredibly powerful, and the community that's come around it has been really. And there's been between Film Independent and Sundance and and all sorts of stuff. There's been so many like circle backs in life that have been really rewarding to see. Mm. Great. Silence. My turn. Okay. <laughs> well, I I feel so uh, lucky to be. A, a, any part of this film and associated with this film, I think I met I met Book through Ira Sachs, yeah. right? We met in mm. Toronto when you were premiering Kid That's Like Jake. Kid Like Jake, yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, it's uh, I I come to filmmaking through community, really, and through like a queer community and film community, and you know, as a trans director, um, you know, who's really worked a lot to tell stories that are not explaining narratives, because I just think it's a it's a disservice to the audience, you know, to do that. It's a power dynamic and, and it keeps everyone at a distance. And um, I, it's just been really, it's so important that stories are told authentically. And when I watch this film, I just feel that so solidly. Um, there's just such a nuance and, and such a, it makes it so universal. And, and you know, just the, the ways that our bodies are shown and the ways that like mentoring is shown. and. You know, I've worked, I've been lucky enough to work in, in a lot of TV and stuff that has also looked at um, bringing stories to, to the center. But, um, but really, this feels like it's told from the ground up authentically, and it's just such a big win, and I, I hope it paves the way for more. I was, I was at Sundance 22 years ago with my film, and it was, um, we were, uh, we directed it, my best friend and I directed it and acted it and everything. We, we code out on it mm -hmm. and uh, and you know we were trying so desperately to get people to understand a different concept of gender mm -hmm. and I just remember doing an NPR interview which was probably quite different than yours which was <laughs> oh my god well, well, uh, what yeah. was uh, it was, uh, <laughs> we wrote this whole thing about gender a note on gender because <laughs> we were just trying to get them to not call it a lesbian movie and um, <laughs> and so uh, and uh, they were just basically like but will straight people watch this movie and um, <laughs> I say this a lot so sorry if anyone's heard me say but basically we're just like we're not French we watch French movies we're not mm -hmm. a shark we watch Jaws like it just uh -huh. doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> it's a story. It's a story you don't need to be this that's the whole point of a story is that you can go other places and connect in ways that you never thought you could and um, I was so excited to watch the reception of this film because 
it was such a big win, you know, to be in competition, to get this award. I'm just, I'm just so excited that I get to see that and, and be part of that. And yeah, I'm just so moved by it. I really, it's just such a beautiful film. It's just such an important and beautiful film. So yeah, I really, I hope it just, yeah, I'm excited for your next film. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, and I think even, even if you hadn't been involved in the movie, you were involved in it happened because you were a role model for me before I even met you. I'm standing on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. you know, so. <laughs> 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 it means so much, thank you. Yes, shucks. <laughs> feelings, both feelings. It's obvious that there's a ton of love around this film and I feel I feel that when when I was watching the film. I was just super drawn in, even from the very first shot, actually. It kind of hooked me. I don't know if that was mm -hmm. always supposed to be the first shot or not, but... No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it drew, it was literally coming, yeah. you know, drawing you in, literally, and I thought it was really effective. I was immediately interested, intrigued <clears throat> by what was happening, and, and we were kind of just being led into a, a story that was already in motion. I thought that was super effective. Okay. Um, all right, last couple questions. Sure. Um, let's talk a little bit about the title. Sure. And yeah, it's, I, I love the title. It has lots of different layers to it. Um, can you share a bit about what you were thinking in mm -hmm. naming mm -hmm. that? Yeah, I can give you the long answer or the short answer. What do you want? Maybe the shorter. <laughs> <laughs> the long answer includes Chile, but the short answer is um, I'm a mutt, uh, outside of being a trans, I think, a uh, trans, wow, I've never seen <laughs> <laughs> uh, Being a trans man, trans. but I think, <laughs> I think everybody's a mutt, and I think muttness, the in-betweenness of things just is a really beautiful umbrella term in a way for people who are trans, who are mixed ethnicity, who are don't find themselves with um, I don't know a specific home. I don't know. I think it's just we're all mutts, especially right now in the United States, more and more. Mm -hmm. That's the short one. That's the short one. You could throw in a little bit longer. Because <laughs> you were sharing something really interesting outside, too, I thought. What's that important. in between this? Just about that it's more, I mean, you were kind of just saying that, but it's more, and I, and I got this from the film, but it's, it's great to articulate it, too, of just your intention of it not, and it's obvious that it's not just about being a, a trans movie. Mm -hmm. It's more than that, and mm -hmm. it's about this mix of identities for for Leo's character and um, and I think that that makes it also super relatable because most people are a big mix of identities um, whether or not they are also trans so I think that that allows us in in a way um, for people outside of the trans community as well. Yeah. well what is, I think what I was saying outside was that I think it was related to what it was called in France. In France, the movie's called 24 Hours in New York. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> New York sells in France, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's been going well over there. <laughs> but uh, in the beginning, we were like, can we call it something like, like a mixed race dog, right? Oh, right and yeah. the word is batard, which is bastard, mm -hmm. which is a little too insulting for me. But what I like about mutt is that it's usually, in Chile, where I come from, it's usually a word that's used to attack someone. Um, mm -hmm. And I think when you use the things that are used against you as armor, it's kind of the, the only thing you can do, right? Stan, be proud of the fact that you are mixed or you are not really fitting anywhere. So, is that part of the longer answer? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's great. Um, and let's just touch briefly on the beautiful cinematography. Um, can you? It's just amazing. You know, I just. There's scenes that are very ordinary in a way that you see in movies all the time just really stood out. For instance, I just remember from watching it the the scene with the sister with your sister where you're sitting on the hood of the car, but the coverage mm. is so beautiful. Mm -hmm. You both look so beautiful and stunning. And yeah, I just love to hear about your your visual approach to the storytelling and kind of getting inside of the, the character's experience. Yeah, that's that's kind of a hard question. I'm, I'm just being honest. It's kind of a hard question. I think a lot of it is like very subconscious, but I yeah. will answer it. Yeah. I think Matthew Pothier is amazing. Um, I really want to do my next feature with him. Mm. But I, I think 
my eight years of Genie experience and I've gaffed features, I've done a lot of things, I think it wasn't until Matt was preparing for his next feature that he called me and he was like, dude, we had such a shorthand for all of our conversations mm. that we didn't even realize how easy it was to talk about lighting and how much more trusting I was to do scenes completely in silhouettes, you know? Yeah. Like that wasn't, I wasn't freaking out because I couldn't see my characters' faces. If anything, I liked that their bodies were talking in almost like puppets, right? Like shadow mm -hmm. puppets. Like mm -hmm. That was really exciting for me. So. I think my background just allowed for a little more of trust in that department and, and just we had yeah. an amazing gaffer. Mm -hmm. She was awesome, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I was excited. I talked to Matt, he was the captain of that ship and I was the captain of this ship and together we were a pirate ship. But like I was excited to say, You're amazing at what you do, that's why I trust you. Now go do your your best, right? Yeah. Um, and I was excited to not touch lights because mm -hmm. that's, that's all I do. So if I could yeah. build on that, I would say that like uh, Vuk is also a very visual person. Like you know what you like and you know what you don't like. And like mm -hmm. he often describes things like that is ugly, but it's beautiful because it's ugly. You know. And I think he and and Matthew really saw out a lot of places that added richness to the texture of a scene, you know, and, mm -hmm. and shooting a movie like this at a really low budget is really hard because mm -hmm. you don't have all the choices in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, like they could find a beautiful place and then I call and try to negotiate the shoot there and then I get $20,000 a day. <laughs> <laughs> and we get great guys, find another spot, you know? Yeah. Um, and so that was like made it a challenge, but I think that like, again, Bukas is a very, is very visually driven and I think that complemented well with Matt who has a really great aesthetic and this was yeah. Matthew's first feature also. Yeah. Um, and we, well, we pushed each other a lot. Yeah, and I think yeah, that really was a great way. discovery yeah. and bonding for, for you guys. And Can I will. Oh, I, was, I just want to ask about like being, having gaffed for so long and understanding lighting mm -hmm. and um, yeah, how many conversations you had because it definitely feels like that played a big part into the not that many. I think yeah. it was like, you like lighting, you're good at it, good, next. Right, right, right. With right. Matt, we actually spent the first, the first month talking about the movie, we went scene by scene, getting on the same page of motion. We didn't right. talk about lights, That's we didn't great. talk about references, nothing. It wasn't until he understood exactly how I felt that That's I started great. talking. Mm -hmm. That's and great. he's a white, cis, straight man. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think his first, his first question to me was, what is the trans gaze? And I was like, mm -hmm. I have no fucking idea. <laughs> Let's figure what it out. The, what is the what? The <laughs> trans gaze. Oh, yeah, good question. I was like, mm -hmm. nobody asked? Yeah, oh, well. <laughs> but just kind of talking about that and, and dissecting That's it. so great because it's such an emotive lighting. And so mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah. that you talked about the emotion first. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that yeah. day in the car was a really hard day. Because again, small team. Oh, the pizza one. Vuk and Matt did a lot of the scouting, All and of the scouting. they picked a beautiful location right next to a train stop. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> not only that was our train going by every like fifteen or twenty minutes. No, but wait, like towards on, the wait. end, every two minutes, we're near a city. <laughs> where the actors are trying to deliver these <laughs> monologues, and it's like hold for train, yeah, and yeah. I'm like. Oh. Like, then, but there was like other crazy things. There was like, like there's a beautiful Matt had this like beautiful in book had this beautiful idea with these kids going by on the bikes. I but need the, kids, Alex. Yes, yeah, so like we need kids, we need kids right now. Like okay, we're trying to cast kids, but like the way that like the day shook out, like we plan to cast the kids to show up later in the day, but they wanted to do that shot first, and we get to the location and there's like kids playing on the corner, and I was like. I'm so sorry, I'm not a creep. Can you introduce me to your parents? <laughs> and they're like talking to their parents and like, we're shooting a movie, can you just sign this waiver? We would love your kids to be in the movie. And then like, they were just like kids on the street riding their own bikes and their own scooters and we did it over and over again. And there's this great opening shot to panning to Fenya and Zoe sitting on the roof. And then like we, when we were like, trying to wrap the day, it was such a long day, it was week one of the shoot, and we had to move the car so that you would have this beautiful lighting with the, oh. with the trees. So we were parked in the middle of the road and we're doing the last shot and then someone starts like mowing their lawn. Yes. <laughs> no one even watering. has a lawn. You're like, how are you mowing your lawn? He was watering his garden and singing. <laughs> and then he, like, so he was like, excuse me for doing <laughs> the movie. Like, can you just hold 
cold and New York doesn't give a fuck. And then, (laughs) the last part of that day, on the fifth floor of the apartment building, someone starts blaring classical music. Like, we could not get a break. And, like, we couldn't figure where it was coming from. That was a really, really hard day. I don't know if we have time. I think it was day four. That was day four. That's the day. I know you were suffering a lot, but that's the day that I was like, Leo is a star. He can mm-hmm. carry this movie that's on his so shoulders. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. And I, even though you were suffering Just through it, yeah. melting. You, you that day, that, I feel like it clicked. I feel like the character clicked in you, and you also came up to me at the end of the day and said, "I can control my eyebrows now." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, "I figured it out. I don't move anymore." Yeah. But it was a hard day. But it really, for me, it was a before and after moment. Um, yeah. In terms of like where it's really true. Going. Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. I mean, that's wild to hear. I can't tell <laughs> that all that was going on. And yeah, it was just reminded me too of how Cena, you really put Leo through, Finya through the, the ringer, you know, with this day. And Leo, you did such an amazing job just kind of landing these big moments, one moment after another, and like each, you know, meaningful and serious and vulnerable. And you just kept landing them it's just i believed you all the way through so thank you amazing work yeah uh, any last final final yeah, thoughts that we didn't say. talk yeah. about that you want to share with everyone i mean i can keep talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> i think we're probably out of time yeah um well thank you all thank for you coming man. tonight